Hello and welcome to the nuts and bolts of building your small firm's ideal tech stack. This webinar is brought to you by CPA Practice Advisor Magazine and Walters Kluwer. I'm Gail Perry, Editor-in-Chief of CPA Practice Advisor, and I'm your moderator today. Before we get started, I'd like to explain how CPE for this webinar works. The webinar qualifies for one credit of continuing professional education. If you plan to earn CPE for attending this session, you must stay with us for a minimum of 50 minutes. In addition, we will display four polling questions during the webinar. You will need to answer at least three of the questions as this is our verification that you are still watching. Please note that we can give CPE credit for multiple people at the same location. So if there are others in your office who would like to attend this event at the same computer, please have them join now and at the end of the event, we'll have you send us their email addresses. At any time, you can enter questions. Our chat area is the ask a question box provided on the left side of your screen. And our speaker will try to get to as many questions as possible during the presentation. Questions not answered during this broadcast will be addressed by the speaker afterwards by email. There's a PDF of the PowerPoint available for download in the event resources section on your screen. There you'll also find a white paper on building a tech stack. The archived version of this webinar will be available later today on the CPA Practice Advisor website at cpapracticeadvisor.com slash webinars. Today, we're joined by Georgia Smith, Product Manager at Walters Kluwer. Georgia also runs a small tax and bookkeeping pro uh, bookkeeping business. And now, Georgia, take it away. Hello and welcome everyone. We're so glad that you joined us here today. So we will go ahead and get started. So our agenda today is we want to go over how small firms want to grow, steps to growing how your firm wants to grow and building your firm's ideal tech stack. But before we get started, we'll go ahead and start with our first polling question. All right, our first question is, what is your primary focus? And the answer options are tax, audit, consulting, operations or administrative, or other or all of the above. So please check the one that is closest to what your focus is and then uh, you can click the submit button to send in your answer. Okay, and we'll give people a few more seconds to go ahead and post their answers. All right, and I think, Georgia, you can continue. It looks like we've got about two thirds of the audience uh, saying that they are primarily focused on tax. Awesome, and so we kind of figured that, that most of the people who would join today would be focused on tax, but obviously some of you are working in other areas as well, and then some of you are actually working in all areas. So we're presenting this information for you today so that it can help you to better your business. So let's go ahead and let's address the elephant in the room. Let's go ahead and talk about growth. But before we go any further, I want you to understand this very important point, and that is that time and resources should not be a deterrent to growth. Don't think about growth as just expanding services, hiring more staff, but also think about it in terms of how you can bring more value to your clients, because this is also a type of growth. In your firm, there are countless areas that provide easy wins that will help you gain additional growth. For example, if you were to take a step back and just determine where you're currently prioritizing your time and resources, you will be able to identify additional areas that need optimizing. When you optimize these areas, that will allow you to grow your firm because save time in your steps will result in larger benefits for your company in terms of revenue, as well as in terms of being able to assist additional clients, because now you will have optimized your time. 
Other ways that you can think about is how you can streamline your low margin work so that you can now dedicate time to your higher value services, as well as freeing up time to work on your more complex tax returns. So take a look at your current workflow and identify areas of lost time that can be better utilized in other areas of your business. Small firms are ripe for growth and they can easily position themselves for success. The tools that the big four firms are using are no longer unobtainable for the small firm. Technology is making these tools accessible for firms of all sizes, including yours. Small firms are able to compete with their larger counterparts, and they're able to add to it something that the larger firms don't have. And that's the personal touch. Larger firms have a tendency to look at people as just another client on the books to get closed and out of the way, while the smaller firms give them that personalized touch of being able to find out ways that they can help them more, not only in taxes, but in other areas of their lives. And so that's where you're going to win at as a small firm. So let's take a look at this survey here. What you're seeing is a 2021 survey that Accounting Today did for us at Walters Kluwer. It's about a variety of topics. And what this graph here specifically shows is how firms told us that they were planning to grow their business. So when we first saw these results, it makes complete sense. Small firms who may have started in tax prep have started to focus on additional areas in their business. If they were focused on maybe just 1040 businesses, we're seeing that they're expanding out into business tax returns. We see that they are expanding out into audit services and tax planning and things of that nature. What's interesting here is that if you look at the top items on this list, they do not have all the same amount of percentage points. That means that everybody is looking at growth from a personal standpoint with their firm as far as how do I want to get from point A to point B? So when you think about growth, a lot of times people have a tendency to get tunnel vision. They start thinking that the only way that they can grow is by adding people or by switching up the total number of clients that they are actually servicing. But the reality is there are a number of ways that you can grow. And the way that you grow is up to you. In addition to that, yes, you can grow your business by adding clients. You can grow it by adding additional resources and increasing staff. But another way that you can grow your business is by simply utilizing technology to streamline your overall processes. And so that's what we're going to kind of go through today. Anytime people are thinking about growth or they're thinking about some type of change, one of the things I can tell you that happens every single time is there is a certain level of fear that comes into play. People start thinking, well, maybe I can't actually do this. Maybe it's going to be more difficult than what I think it is. But we're here to show you some of the easy steps that you can take, the technology that's available, other processes that you can utilize that will help you in this, in this area of growth. So the first thing that people talk about is they don't want to be forced to add a service that they want they don't want to support. Sometimes the firm is not sure of how a product actually fits into their workflow. That's why we have consultants available who can walk you through the process as far as what you're actually needing, what you're currently doing, and then helping you to determine which software is going to best meet those needs so that you can take it to the next level. If we look at overburdening staff that is already at max capacity, let's face it, we're all aware of the great resignation. It has hit every single firm, no matter how big or how small that firm is. So sometimes firms don't have the headcount, which means that their staff can't keep up with the existing business, much less adding other businesses. And so the firm is unable to determine, well, what do I need to do next? How am I going to be able to handle the additional clientele that I want to take on? If you start looking at budget concerns, of course, as you're purchasing new software, that's going to be an increase over what you may be currently spending. However, if you're again looking at your processes and looking at where you can streamline business, you may find that you're actually wasting a lot of time and resources in certain areas because you haven't optimized your workflow. So we can help you by looking at your budget, determining what your real cost is that you're currently spending so that you can determine, well, what's my next step from here? 
And then, of course, anytime you're purchasing new software, with that technology, it has to be implemented and staff has to be trained. So a common question and concern becomes, will this jeopardize my existing business because of the learning curve? Will this cause a decrease in the quality of services that I offer because now I'm not as familiar or my staff is not as familiar with this new software that I'm going to use? And when you start thinking about how your staff training time is not billable time, people have a tendency to get overwhelmed in the process. Software installation and implementation is also not billable time. However, there are a number of software solutions that are available that are designed to get your firm quickly up and running with minimum downtime, as well as providing additional training that you need. So don't let that be a deterrent to growth because there are a number of different ways that software is able to assist you in that so that you can continue to offer the high quality services that your customers have become accustomed to. But as you're starting to think about it, Again, people start to wonder, how can I get past these fears? How can I achieve organic growth? Because it sounds easy with what I'm saying. Well, you just take this step and you take that step. But what is it that's going to actually help you get over the, the hump? So I want you to take a second and just think back to those survey results that we just looked at. There were a total of eight different ways on that list that small firms said they were trying to grow. The top three were business clients, referrals, and new technology. So again, what that means is that what growth looks like to one firm is not what it necessarily looks like for another firm. And because of that, you have options. And the first thing when it comes to growth is identifying where you are and where you want to be. That gap between where you are and where you want to be represent the steps that you need in order to reach your ultimate growth goal. This gap exists usually because your firm is missing solutions or processes that are needed to fill that gap. And because of that, technology and other tech tools are what you can use to bridge that gap between where you are and where you want to be because you're able to then select solutions that are gonna help you at each stage of that process. And the wonderful part about growth is that how you grow is completely up to you. You can grow as a single stage, you can grow multiple stages, or you can grow all at once. Some people will come in and they will hit the ground running. They will be in business for a couple of months and determine that they need all of the bells and whistles. And that's fine for that particular person in their firm. It may not be what's best for you. You may be the type where you want to grow in the little steps at a time. And that's completely fine as well. So how can we help you? So by showing you the different technology that's available, we can show you how to overcome the challenges and to put your mind at ease about being able to grow. Smaller firms are realizing the value of making digital transformations. In our case, by moving to our access platform, which is a cloud-based solution that allows them to help manage their practice because it does use a common core database across all the different modules. We also have clients who are still wanting to be on desktop solutions. For that, we have ProSystem FX as well as our ATX solution. So if you're looking at some of the examples with firms, they're looking at how can they manage the time that their staff is spending working on the different tax returns or other services that they're offering. We have time solutions that are available for that. If you're wanting to track your productivity of your staff, we have that available with products such as Access Workflow Scheduler. If you're wanting to look at your profitability, how much money am I actually making from this particular client? You can look at that from the different practice reports and dashboards that we have available throughout our solutions. If you're looking for risk management and analysis, being able to communicate with your clients, there is a solution for that, just depending on what your needs are and how quickly you're wanting to achieve these goals. And that brings us to our next polling question. Okay, this is question number two. What are the biggest challenges that your firm has faced over the last six months? And your options are staffing, hiring, and retention challenges, process and workflow issues, technology and or integration restrictions, clients that are unprepared or late with documents, or inability to track engagement status. 
So pick the one that's the closest to your biggest challenge and then click submit. And so as these come in, I'm going to ask you, Georgia, in your own business, what's the biggest challenge that you faced? So the biggest challenge that I faced this year was that I picked up a number of clients through referrals and they happen to be older taxpayers. And so the biggest challenge was getting them to be willing to utilize my client portal so that they could actually upload their documents to me so that I could prepare their return without them having to leave the comfort of their own home. And so some of them were like, well, I'm just used to popping into the preparer's office and I have my folder that has all of my things in it. And then I'm there for several hours as they're preparing it. And so I had to get them to understand that it's a lot easier and faster if you send me your documents so that I can go ahead and double check to make sure, number one, that we have everything before we start processing your return. And number two, if there's something that, that we need, it's a lot easier if you're still at home for me to say, hey, this is the other document that I need from you and for you to send that to the portal without me having to wait on you to go home, get it and bring it back. And just showing them that they can do that from the comfort of their home 24 hours a day, whether I'm in the office, whether I'm asleep, whether I'm out shopping or paying bills, they can still send me their information so that I could actually prepare the returns. And so that really took a little bit of just talking to them and getting them to understand how it was a better process for them and how they, they don't have to worry about, well, what happened to my papers because they can see everything that I'm doing. But I was able to get all of them converted except for one. Um, she was about 86 years old and she was just dead set on, no, I'm going to come and I'm going to sit there <laughs> while you do everything. And I'm going to bring all my folders with me. And that was completely fine. Um, it wasn't like it disrupted my day or anything like that, but she was just the one out of the additional ones that I picked up this year that she was just set on bringing in that paper <laughs> for me. Um, <laughs> But that, but it's a challenge that you face. Some people are just really used to doing their taxes a certain way, interacting with their preparer in a specific way. And when you introduce something new for them, for some of them, they're going to be a little skeptical at first. They're not going to be able to see the value. But for you as a preparer, owning your firm, being able to explain to them, well, this is why this is a better process for you and how it's going to save you time and save me time. And it's going to make it a lot easier for everyone. That's going to be key. It's just letting them know that technology is here to help us. And so if we're utilizing technology and utilizing it in the right way, then we're going to all be a lot happier people. And we're going to be able to go on and spend time actually living our lives and not being bogged down by work that could have been done a different way. Nice. Okay. And our poll results are showing that about half, um, well, 40% of our attendees said that their biggest challenge was clients who are unprepared or late with their documents. <laughs> <laughs> and that definitely happens. And that's why it is so much easier if they don't have their documents and you have a client portal or some other means that you're using for client collaboration to be able to tell that client, hey, I need this one additional document for you and for them to have the time to find it without sitting in the office, that is 100% going to streamline a lot of your processes and you and your staff are going to save a lot of time because you're going to be able to reach out to them, get that information without that impact in the next client who's waiting. Okay, so let's talk about some steps for how your firm wants to grow. As your firm grows, your technology needs will change. Manual processes that you may have used when you were a firm that maybe only serviced 30 or 50 clients, that worked on a smaller scale. As your firm starts to grow and you're taking on additional clients or you are adding staff or you are taking on more complex returns, those manual processes are not gonna work as well for you. And so that again is where technology comes into play. So just like I was talking about the, the one client from this year, 
where she was just dead set on bringing in her papers, if I didn't have a way for my other clients to be able to electronically send me their documents, then I could have could have been actually stuck with all of them waiting on documents and not being able to move to the next step in tax prep. So you want to make sure that you're using technology to your benefit. Your small firm tech step should include solutions that will aid you in being able to scale up. So some of the questions that you want to ask yourself is, number one, how am I sharing information between staff members so that everyone has access to the most current information? In your firm, if you have someone who handles intake for your clients and someone else who's preparing return and then a third person who's reviewing the return, you wanna make sure that all of those people have access to the data that's coming in so that no one is waiting when it comes to their step in the process, they can continue on on so that that previous person is freed up now for the next client who's coming in. You want to ask yourself questions like, will my current processes work if I pick up an additional 50% of clients? So if I currently have 100 clients and then I get all of these referrals that come in and now I'm at 150, will these processes still work? Am I going to have some type of bottleneck that is going to interrupt my process, that's going to interrupt the quality of the services that I provide? You want to ask if you, for some of the firms, um, and we've seen this recently, even smaller firms are merging together. They're acquiring other firms. Is that the type of, of growth that you're looking for? So if you're doing that and now you're picking up not just a few additional referrals, but an entire new firm, will your current processes be able to handle that level of business? Is your technology positioned to make it easier for you or is it going to be harder for you? And is it going to impact your actual employees? Because we talk about the impact to clients, but you also have an internal impact to think about as well if your employees get frustrated because now they have systems that don't work as well for the amount of business that they're doing, you seriously run the risk of those employees leaving. So you want to make sure that your technology is on par to be able to handle all of that. So when you're thinking about steps to grow in your firm, you want to establish your goals, design a plan, consider the staffing and capacity concerns, and then again, you want to vet your current tech stack. Is it working? Is it not working? So your goals, again, I've said it a couple of times already, it's worth repeating. Your goals are your goals. The way you want to grow your business is going to depend on you. You don't have to worry about trying to copy the preparer who's on the other side of town. You don't have to worry about trying to copy the preparer who may even be down the street. You want to grow the way you want to grow. So lay out your plans for what it is that you want. You want to make sure that your plans are realistic for how you want to get to where you want to go so that you don't get frustrated through the process and then start to think that growth is not for you. When you're considering your capacity and staffing concerns, you want to start thinking about hiring additional staff. Think about upskilling your current staff. You may have staff members who've been with you for a number of years, and maybe they don't have the skill set right now to be able to review tax returns, but that's a skill that can be learned and you can work with them. That's going to boost their morale in your company because now they're thinking, well, I have other things that I can do for this firm that I'm working for. I'm not going to be obsolete because they are investing in me. Because when you invest in your staff, that's an investment in your overall firm. You can also consider outsourcing. There are even smaller firms who are outsourcing part of their business and their work now. So that's something else to consider. When you're looking at your current tech stack, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? What things do you think could use some improvement? Um, do you have any gaps? Do your current tools work well with one another? Because sometimes what we'll do, especially as smaller firms, if we have the mindset of I'm looking strictly at budget, we may end up with a number of different products from different 
firms from different other um, vendors that we're using to take care of a specific goal, but they may not work well with each other. And if they're not working well with each other, if they can't be integrated, well, that's a time gap that you're looking at, that you're now spending time and spending money for your staff members to work in these other solutions. So you want to kind of look at that and say, well, is it really worth it to save maybe $50 here or $100 there if overall my my staff is taking an additional 20 hours a week collectively to take care of the manual processes of inputting data from one system to another. There's also the concern with that as far as the accuracy of the data, because let's just face it, we're all people. As you're entering data from one system to another, it's very easy to um, type in something incorrectly versus if you're using a solution where there is a common core database where the information just automatically flows through the system when you log into a different module, that same information is there. Ask yourself what is missing. And if you're not sure of what's missing, go back to your goals as far as what it is that you want to do and compare it to what tools you have available that's assisting you with that. And then determine, okay, was well, there something else that should be here that could help me do things a whole lot easier? And again, think about your firm strategy. Think about it overall from a standpoint of, does it match what I want to do? Or did I just come up with a strategy that sounded good based on what I thought I was hearing in the industry? Um, look at it from the standpoint of, does what I'm hearing from other firms of my size match up to what I'm trying to do? And so when you're looking at it from that standpoint of strategy, that will also aid you as far as being able to determine what do I need to do next? So when we look at the common capacity concerns, and I kind of mentioned those um, real briefly, when you're looking at hiring, you're looking at upskilling, and you're looking at outsourcing, we do a, an annual survey here at Walters Kluwer um, that asks for insights on where firms of all sizes are succeeding, where the challenges are, and we're still working on our analysis. And so we'll be able to dive more deeply into the report in our December Innovations Conference. But what shouldn't be a shock to anyone is that staffing is one of the top issues listed by many firms. And again, part of that is the great resignation. It's people who are going out and they're trying different things. COVID, of course, had a major impact for a lot of people when they're looking at their career goals. And so some people just said, maybe this isn't for me and I'm going to take a break. So this is why addressing capacity concerns and developing plans to mitigate that risk is should be an important part of your growth plan because you don't want to have a plan set up where you have all of these ideas of how you want to grow. And then when it gets to that point of where you want to implement those plans, you don't have the staff available that's going to be able to help you actually manage the business at that point. So again, hiring additional staff, that's traditionally how firms have handled that capacity concerns, but labor shortages, the great resignation is allowing staff members to be very picky about where they want to work. So you want to make sure that you're able to attract the best talent that's out there, keep them from going other places, as well as keeping the people that you currently have by, again, upskilling, giving them a reason to stay with the firm. Younger generations are looking for firms who are using more advanced technology that's going to help them better service their clients, and that's going to save them a lot of time. When you're looking at your older generations, oftentimes they're used to the manual ways. Many of us, when we first started preparing taxes, we learned how to do them on paper. Some people don't have that same type of experience today. So when they're going into firms, they're looking for something different. And so this is where upskilling and technology works hand in hand. It allows you to better connect to employees, connect those employees to the right processes and technologies that will empower them to increase their engagement with each other, increase their engagement with your clients. And that in turn is going to increase retention. It's gonna promote that talent within your organization. And it's gonna give you that stable platform of capacity and staff management. And then of course there's outsourcing. 
again, there are many firms that are using that to help augment their staffing needs because sometimes you just simply can't find the talent that you need or you just have too much business. And so, and that's not a bad thing. It's always good to have too much business, but being able to service that business, that's where you want to make sure that you're still able to do that and to do that quickly and easily. So here at Walters Kluwer, our director of outsourcing, um, Ray Barlow, he has a great blog series about questions to ask if you're starting to think about looking for an outsourcing partner um, and how to get the most out of that partnership with the outsourcing um, organization. So anyone who's considering outsourcing, if you're curious about it, go ahead and take a look at that series. Um, you should be able to find that on our Walter Square website. Um, if not, we'll make sure that we get that information out to you. But scaling up and growing doesn't just mean making sure you have technologies to support your clients, but it means making sure that you have the right technology to attract the employees, to keep your employees, and to support your clients so that your business can grow. Mid-size and smaller firms have fewer business support staff in general, but this is a way that you can help to augment that. And our research has shown that plans to increase staffing for accountants and admins are similar across all firm sizes. So not just the large firms, not just mid firms and not just the small firms. But what happens is the smaller firms, so the mid-size and smaller firms are not planning to add that support at the same level as the larger firms. And a lot of times that boils down to not having the information that they need to determine how to do that. And so that's why you wanna make sure that you have technology available to help your staff to support your growth needs. So we talked about questions to ask concerning your current tech stack. So you want to look at what is and isn't working. Where you perform in processes manually that could possibly be automated because that's gonna save time. How do your tools integrate with one another? If they integrate at all, we've already talked about that a little bit, but you really wanna take a hard look at that because that is time spent that you can't bill to your clients while you are trying to get information from one system into another system. And what new technologies will you need or think you will need to help support those growth plans? So when you're running at max capacity here, you wanna think about how your work or information flows through your firm business and what does it look like? What do you wanna change about your workflow if you had a magic wand? So I always ask myself, if I could just make anything absolutely better right now, what is it that I would want to do? Of course, part of that is I would like to be on a beach in Hawaii, but um, talking about workflow, that's not going to help me too much if I'm just chilling out on the beach. But overall, as you're looking at those types of things, the one thing that I would say personally is that I want to reduce the amount of time that it takes to complete a tax return and reduce the amount of human error in the process. And that's just really personal for me. I want to make sure that every single return that I prepare is of the highest quality. And I wanna be able to do that quickly. Um, one of the reasons obviously is because that's less work, more time for play. But in addition to that, as I'm picking up additional referrals, I'm gonna need that additional time, especially for first year clients that are coming in, you're looking over all of their prior year returns that were prepared by someone else. You're gonna need that time to do that and to be able to accurately give them an idea of what they're looking for, what they need. And if there were any issues, oftentimes you may find an issue in a previous filed return and you wanna be able to assist the client with that. But if you don't have the time to do it because your processes are not giving you the leeway that you need, then that's not going to help that relationship with the client. So if I had a magic wand, those are the things that I'm looking for. I need to save time and I need to be able to verify that everything that I'm doing with my data entry process is accurate. One of the ways by doing that is leveraging new technologies and features. So in Access and in ProSystem FX, we can help you to remove gaps in your tax prep process by auto-flowing some of the information that you're actually putting into the return. We can reduce your data entry errors because we have scan with autoflow. For that particular product, you scan in the tax documents provided by the client, and then you're able to actually automatically flow that information 
into the tax return itself. So what the system does is it reads over the information, determines what's there, and then it puts it into the tax return for you into the particular fields that it needs to go into. That's gonna save you time with the data entry because you're not having to manually enter it yourself. What you're gonna do obviously is check the information to make sure it's accurate, but that's a lot quicker process than going in and manually typing it in yourself. Um, you can keep your client documents and communications organized in a document management system. We have several of those available across our different solutions. That's going to eliminate the need for filing cabinets. It's going to eliminate the need for having to go through and search emails for information from your clients. Put it in your document management system, which is going to also give you an audit, uh, an audit control so that you can see who actually accessed this data. You're able to lock down information if there's information that you don't need particular people in your firm to look at. You're gonna be able to add those added controls that you can't necessarily do with a filing cabinet. You can also complete the no touch, no touch tax return by using electronic signatures. We have that across all of our platforms where your client can remotely sign any of their tax documents, that's going to save them a step of coming back into the office. And because you're able to send them the electronic signature request, you don't have to be on the phone tracking someone down for the signature because once you send the request, you will be able to track and determine when they actually signed it and you don't have to wait on them to come back in. You don't have to wait to find out, well, did they, um, did they lose their paperwork because it's all electronic. So you're able to track that. And then of course, uh, adopting automation technology lies beyond the tax return. And what that does is it's going to give time and money savings back to you and your firm that's going to allow you to do other things. You can leverage integrated tax research tools. So we have Answer Connect, which is our tax research platform. It is integrated with our products so that while you're actually in the tax return, if you encounter a tax scenario that you're not familiar with, you don't have to go and Google it. You don't have to go and research the IRS website or the state websites. You don't have to refer back to the instructions. We have that integrated in the system. So at the click of a button, you can find that same information, which is going to save you the time. It's going to cut down on the back and forth that you're needing to do. And as tax technologies rapidly evolve, you want to make sure that your software is optimized, that you're using first-class software that's going to get you the training and the support that you need, that's going to help you as you reach the next level. Communication issues. You got to have a better way to communicate with your tax clients. As you guys have already said, some of your biggest issues is not getting the paperwork that you need from your clients. So you want to make sure that you have a way to communicate to that client that, hey, I still need this tax data. But also you want to do it in a manner so that you don't have to have a staff member who is dedicated to nothing except for chasing down missing paperwork. So you're going to need some type of solution that's going to aid you in that. So some of the most successful firms and tax offices that we have been speaking to lately have said that they have been very proactive with their client communications and trying to gather that data from their clients. So they do that through engagements, they do that through organizers, and then of course having the document management systems and a portal so that as the information comes in, they're able to track it. And at the end, they're able to deliver outcomes to the customers that shows the customer that, hey, we are aware that you're one of the customers that we have to track down every single year. So we have this, this system in place now that's going to help you to help us and keep us all on track. Some of these small firms, as a matter of fact, most of them are looking for cloud-based solutions that will help them with that because it is going to streamline the process for them. It's going to change how you're able to run your business. When you're freeing up that time used to track down data and you can now apply that to another area of your business, that is going to help you overall be able to provide a very better experience to your clients. It's going to improve your work-life balance for your staff. It's going to improve the overall morale in the company because people are not feeling like they're wasting time tracking down documents that they should have already received. Those are frustrating manual tax, tasks that no one wants to be stuck with. So you can use technology to alleviate that strain in your office. 
And as you're making sure that your clients have an easy way to communicate with you, that's also going to reduce phone calls. Because what you don't want, again, on your time is your clients having to call you all the time asking, well, hey, do you have all of my data? Is there anything else that you need from me? If you're using a platform where you can quickly add a note that gets sent automatically to the client saying, I have these items here, but I need these still these two items that you haven't sent me yet, then now you don't have to worry about the client feeling frustrated in that they don't know what it is that you're needing. This is going to help you decrease the activities in your firm that are not used to actually do the business itself. And so that's why you want to keep in mind the different technology that's available for you to help in those areas. Looking at workflow automation, highly manual processes, again, they take up time and it's time that you cannot bill your clients for. So labor shortages, that's going to definitely impact you if your processes are all manual because you're not going to have the staff that you need that's going to be able to go in and to handle those. That's going to be a direct impact to all other areas of your firm because now you're going to have to move staff that you do have to handle those manual processes so that you can now get to the point of where you're running your business. High turnover leads to knowledge loss. You have fewer candidates that are coming into this profession. Again, shortage of staff, COVID, great resignation, people just being fed up in general. Prepare fatigue and burnout. Volume of changes from the IRS. Every single year, the IRS gives us some type of present and it's not a good present with all these changes. And so people get burned out on that and they get to the point to where they just don't want to do it anymore. They're saying, you know, I've had enough. This is the third tax season where tax season has been extended or there was a last minute change that we're now having to go back and amend returns to account for a change that was not in place at the beginning of tax season. So you want to insulate yourself from those types of changes by utilizing the, so the software that's available to help you with those manual processes so that all of that can at least be automated so that you can really focus on preparing returns, offering your other services if you're offering audit, if you're offering tax planning, you wanna make sure that you have time for all of that. Again, you have to leverage technology that's going to allow your staff to work in those areas and where they are most needed and workflow automation is the way to do that because it is going to reduce that time. All the manual processes, or at least the most of them, them, you can actually go out the window with them, set up the software to do it for you, and then you go in and you check it. Workflow automation is a critical part of an accounting firm's technology infrastructure. And we're proud to offer top two workflow solutions available in the market. Um, both CCH Access Workflow and CCH Access Workstream integrate with the CCH Access platform. They provide key workflow, workflow for functionality um, across multiple areas within the firm. Um, so you can implement your workflow solution as the backbone of your technology infrastructure. It's going to help you by increasing visibility into the work that's moving through the firm. You're going to know who's doing what, who hasn't done what, so that you can stay on top of work that is needed to be done. It's gonna help you identify red flags and bottlenecks in your system long before the problems arise to where now you're at a filing deadline and you realize you have a number of returns that are not, are not anywhere near being ready to actually file. It's gonna create a greater sense of accountability by ensuring that you have standardized processes that are followed. I can tell you from recently going out to different firms as part of a contextual design project and just looking at the different processes that firms are using, I went into several firms where the process depends on who's actually doing the work and there's nothing that's standardized. And so it kind of makes you wonder, well, how can you be sure that your work is actually being done to perfection? So if you have a workflow automation tool, you can set in place a standardized process so that your staff members are not taking it upon themselves to do work five and six different ways. You'll be able to manage your resources more effectively by being able to see who's available to actually do work. And that in itself can save you so much money because now you will have 
staff that is not overburdened with work while you have staff that has nothing to do at all. They're just twiddling their thumbs because you're able to track that with your workflow tools. You'll be able to enhance your client services by the continuous process improvements because as you're using workflow tools and again, being able to identify the bottlenecks before the issues arise, you can now tweak your processes to fall in line to where you're going to be more efficient across your staff members. So what you want to do is, again, those digital workflows, it's going to improve upon the inefficient traditional methods that people use. I was in different offices where people were emailing each other back and forth to ask them to do the next step in the process versus it being automated to where once it's time for this person to complete their part of the puzzle, they would get an automated message that lets them know, hey, this is ready for you. And instead of waiting on someone to email them, because we've all gotten busy before, you've worked all day, you haven't had lunch. And if you have a process where you need to email someone to remind them to do something, but you haven't eaten all day, well, that email may or may not get sent in a timely manner. It may not get sent at all. But if you're using technology that handles that for you, once you click in the system that your process is done for your part, the system handles the rest for you. And so you want to make sure that you are thinking about tools like that that will be able to help you. Data entry. Having to enter data in multiple places. I've mentioned this before because as I went out in the contextual design project, one of the things that I saw was mind boggling to me. And our group that went out, we termed this the swivel chair syndrome. We were noticing for some of these firms that were using solutions from different companies, what they were doing is they would have data in one system. Then they would have to move and enter that same data into a different system and then into a third system or fourth system in many cases. And so what they were doing all day was literally moving back and forth, left to right, because they had multiple monitors, moving information from this screen to that screen to the next screen. And we were like, that is a swivel chair. If you start looking at how much time you are spending moving that information from one place to the other, risking that there is a data entry issue, which we did actually see in one of the office that we went into, we were watching a guy as he was preparing a return and he was entering data in from multiple places. He had, um, he had a spreadsheet, he had an email from a customer, and then he had his tax program open and he was trying to enter all the information and once he completed the return, the, he, it wasn't balanced for the numbers that he was expecting it to be. And so we literally spent 45 minutes with this guy as he was going through and trying to figure out, well, where is the issue? Why are the numbers not what I expect them to be? And the at the end of the day, the issue was he had not entered in depreciation in on the spreadsheet, but it was actually in the tax return. And that's why the numbers didn't match. But if he were using a system where all of that was flowed in from an integrated platform, then he wouldn't have had to waste 45 minutes that he could not bill his client because the information would have already existed. He would have already been using his fixed asset manager program. He would have been able to click a button that would have sent the fixed asset information into the tax return and all of it would have matched up. And if he had imported in his client's balance sheet from whichever program he was using, instead of having a spreadsheet that the customer had emailed him, and in the email they had added in extra information, that would have saved him 45 minutes where he could have been looking at his next return and preparing it or taking a break or whatever else he needed to do. But instead, he had 45 minutes of wasted time. So you want to look at your solutions and ask yourself, am I doing this? Do I have the swivel chair syndrome in my office? And if I do, well, let me see how much time this is actually costing me while I'm in my swivel chair. Because that time, you need to be able to put that back into your business so that you get a return on your investment. And if you're unable to do that, then you have a technology gap. And so you want to make sure that you're closing up those gaps. And some of the ways that you can do that when you're thinking about entering in data from multiple different locations is we have integrations across our platforms using the Common Core database. 
We have um, for CCH Access, there is a marketplace that's available for some of the third party solutions that you may be using that you can actually import that data into Access. And then there are various APIs that are available as well that allow you to import in data from different places so that you're not having to rekey that data yourself and worry about whether or not it's accurate and then spend the time trying to track down where your errors occur. And I believe that's going to bring us to our next polling question. Okay, this is our third polling question. And it is, what tools are you currently considering adding to your tech stack in the next one to three years? And you can select all of the options that are appropriate for you. Software to help automate and improve processes. Software to help with collaborating with clients remotely. Software to help stay up to date on new legislation. Software that better provides that provides better compliance services, or none. I probably won't add any new tools to my tech stack. So check all of the ones that you that are appropriate for you, and then click the submit button. Okay, and it looks like just about all the answers are in. And a lot of options across the board, people are planning on adding a lot of software in the years to come. Awesome. I'm telling you, being able to add software in that's going to automate the processes for you and to save that time is going to be a key changer for you in your business as you're looking at ways to grow is being able to remove those manual processes that are going to slow you down by having the software do it for you. So let's talk real quickly. I know we're running up on time because I have a tendency to talk a lot. So <laughs> um, we'll try to get through the rest of this. Um, when you're looking at building your small firm tech stack, one of the things that we have found as we've looked at interviews of leaders in the accounting and tax industry, the biggest trends for 2022 so far have been technology adoption and expanded services. So for those of you who are looking to expand your technology adoption, that's going to just give you extra tools that you need to help you save time. For those who are looking at expanding their services, you're going to be able to grow by being able to offer additional services to your clients and by using technology to aid you in that. So for example, if you're looking at adding tax planning services, there's software that will help you in that so that you can walk through different scenarios with your clients and show them how different um, financial decisions that you're make that they're making it will affect them from a tax standpoint. Experts are encouraging the aggressive pursuit of technology, mainly because of COVID, because we've all had to adapt and adjust to the way we do business, but also in support of those expanded services. Because by having the technology to back you up, you're going to be able to overcome a lot of the challenges that firms are seeing right now because of the impacts with COVID, because of the great resignation, because of the number of people who are leaving the industry, and then also by the desire to actually grow the business. Technology is going to be what's going to get you there. If you're going to return to an office only model, your client base, if you think about it, most of them have already adapted to a remote work um, situation. A lot of companies were offering remote work. We did it here at Walters Kluwer. Um, many other companies did that. And so clients are looking for the ability to interact with you remotely. They want to make sure that if they don't have time to come and sit in your office while you prepare their taxes, that you have the means for them to be able to get the data to, to you so that you can prepare the return and then they can come in and discuss it with you if needed or if they need a consultation, but they're not looking to be in the situation where they're making an appointment, they're showing up at your office and they're there for an hour or two as you're going through the tax return prep process. And so COVID really has just been an accelerator to the trend of being able to interact remotely and then being able to expand services because now you have time as a firm, if you don't have people that are in front of you in your office to look at different areas where you can also 
expand your businesses. You have time to learn about different things versus when you had people that were sitting in your office all day, every day during tax season for those long hours that we all worked. There are different building blocks that are available to help you realize your independent um, goals as far as how you're wanting to grow. Because again, it's about growing the way you want to grow, but also understanding what are the very basic things that I need to be able to work and do my business the way I'm doing it today, and as well as how am I going to be able to do this tomorrow. So you want to make sure that you're looking at the importance of every aspect of your firm. You're looking at what is the highest priority, what's the lower priority, and how quickly do I want to get things done? So what we are seeing is that firms are building their long-term strategies. They're planning how they want to transform in the future for what is their, gonna, what is their firm of tomorrow going to look like. And with proper planning and with the right tools, you can make sure that you are more resilient to whatever comes next. Hopefully we don't see anything like COVID anytime soon, but it's still here. And there are other things that come up that we have to be able to adjust to. We have um, different um, natural events. So we just had hurricanes that came through the Florida area. And you have to make sure that in the event of any type of catastrophic event, that your firm is still able to function and that you're still able to meet your current business, as well as the expectations for your future goals. And you're going to be able to do that with technology, but looking at the different building blocks for what you need. You need a tax software product if you're going to do tax prep. You need a way to communicate with your clients. You need a way to securely and safely store your data. So in the event that you have to change locations, you still have access to the data that you need to service your clients. You want to make sure that you have self-service tools available for your clients so that they don't have to call you for every little thing. You'll have information available for them for the next steps. Um, again, looking at CCH access, it has been reimagined for firms that are smaller in size, just with different packages that are available. But the key with this is making sure that you are proactive and not reactive, looking again for the things that you're wanting to do, how you're wanting to grow your business, and making sure that you have solutions that are available that's going to help you to meet those goals. So you want to look at tax research with all the changes with the tax law. You want to make sure that you have other solutions that are available that are going to help you to be able to do everything quickly and to be successful when you're looking at your growth, your growth goals. And that's going to bring us to our final polling question. Okay, here we go. What technologies would you like to learn more about? And you can check all of the boxes that apply to you. Um, the options are tax compliant software, cloud-based workflow automation, client collaboration and document management, tax advisory, predictive intelligent software, or none, my firm has all the technology it needs. So click all the boxes that apply to you and then go ahead and click submit. All right, and then while people are answering that, do you want to take a look at a couple of questions that have come in from our audience? Um, yeah, so I see a question that someone is asking um, about an elderly client who cannot scan documents. So um, even though they're elderly, a lot of people still have cell phones. So a lot of our technology, they can actually take a picture and send that information to you. Also, depending on what they have, for example, if they have brokerage statements that are available, as long as they give you the proper permissions, you can actually download that information directly from the, the brokerage company itself and actually import that in a tax return. You can do the same thing with W-2s. A lot of your payroll companies, such as ADP, offer the ability to import in the documents um, automatically for you into your tax program. So there are a number of ways that you can still get the information that you need from your client, whether they have a scanner or not. Okay, and it looks like we have time for about one more question if you want to pick one of the others. Okay, let's just see. Um, uh, 
So we've got a question here about providing detailed instructions for new clients on how to use technology. So one of the things that we have when you're using our portal solutions is we do have information available that you can provide to your client that will tell them what to expect when they're using the portal solution. And then what you can do on your side is we also have information for you that will show you what your client will actually see. So that if you do happen to get a call or an email for a client where they're saying, well, I went through the instructions and I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do, you will also have the information available so that you will know what they're seeing from their side, which their interface will be different than yours, so that you'll be able to quickly assist your client. But we do have documents available to provide to your client that tells them this is what you do next. And then on some of the solutions that we have, it also has the little tour the first time that they log in where it just walks them through what the different features are. All right. Well, I think we're at the end of our time. Georgia, thank you so much for an outstanding presentation. Um, lots of valuable information. I hope all of you enjoyed this webinar. We want to thank all of our attendees for uh, your time today. And we'd like to thank Walters Kluwer for making this event possible and enabling us to offer a free CPE credit to each attendee. Um, if there were any questions that were unanswered in the uh, Q&A, uh, we'll be sending those to Georgia for answering by email later. If you have any questions about CPE, you can contact me directly at gperry, G-P-E-R-R-Y, at cpapracticeadvisor.com. Also, if more than one person watched this webinar with you, you can request CPE for those other attendees by sending the name and address, name and email address of each additional attendee to me. That's G Perry at cpapracticeadvisor.com. You will now be presented with an optional post-event evaluation for this webinar, which will appear on your screen momentarily. You also, you'll receive your CPE certificate in your email box later today. Look for a message from CPA Practice Advisor. Thank you all again. Our audio will end now.